hi students so here I'm going to explain you about Geoffrey Saucer and this Geoffrey Saucer as a poet and Geoffrey Saucer's masterpiece The Canterbury Tales and special reference to the wife of Bart's prologue is prescribed in the syllabus of second semester uh, honors at the colleges which are affiliated to Borderland University. So in today's this uh, virtual class, I'm going to explain you about Geoffrey Saucer, brief about his life and also his uh, era and his masterpiece, The Canterbury Tales. Special focus will be on uh, Wife of Bart's prologue. So now let us proceed to the next slide. So here, Geoffrey Saucer, he was born in 1340 and he belonged to the medieval period which is also known as Middle English period. So this Middle English period started from 1000 AD to 1500 AD and this medieval English period came after anglo saxon period or which is also known as Old English period and before uh, Renaissance period. So during Renaissance era, Shakespeare, Ben Johnson, they were in England, they were the great writers in England. But before Renaissance period, this in this medieval English period, Geoffrey Saucer was the prominent writer. So Geoffrey Saucer, he was also known as the father of English poetry or he was also known as great storyteller. So in his masterpiece Canterbury Tales, he basically uh, reflected about the socio-political scenario of uh, uh, medieval English society. And Geoffrey Saucer, he is also very much popular for his storytelling. And he was the contemporary of Boccaccio, who was the, uh, you know, who was the famous writer during the time of Geoffrey Saucer in France. And again, Dante. Dante was a popular writer in Italy, who was also the contemporary of Geoffrey Saucer. And Geoffrey Saucer, he was influenced more by Boccaccio than Dante. So uh, these were the great writers during uh, medieval period. So now let us proceed to the next slide. So here I am going to show you about uh, the great works of Geoffrey Saucer. No doubt that Canterbury tells is the masterpiece of Geoffrey Saucer, but there are more uh, great works which were written by Geoffrey Saucer, like Troilus and Chrysid, The Parliament of Fowls, The Legend of Good Women, The Book of Dusses, uh, The House of Fan, and Roman de la Rose. But Canterbury tells, tells uh, considered to be uh, the masterpiece of Geoffrey Saucer. Why? I will tell you later. The Canterbury tells, you know, this, the word Canterbury, first let me explain about it. So Canterbury, it is a name of a place of, uh, during the medieval period in England. And this Canterbury was famous for uh, the shrine of St. Saint, Saint Thomas Becket. So there was this religious, you know, place where the shrine of St. Thomas Becket was situated. And there were 29 characters. And these 29 characters uh, were mentioned as pilgrims. So what pilgrims means? Pilgrims means the pe uh, people who you know, are traveling to a religious place. They are called pilgrims. And the journey of traveling to a religious place is called 
pilgrimage. So all the 29 characters, they were pilgrims and they were on what? On pilgrimage to the religious place called the shrine of St. Thomas Becker. There were 29 characters. And all these 29 characters, interestingly, they were from various professions. You know, there were this knight, there were pardoner, there were this miller, wife of Bath. So in likewise, there were, you know, they were from various professions. In that way, Geoffrey Saucer, uh, you know, reflected, highlighted the medieval English society in his masterpiece. And all these 29 characters were divided into three sections of the English society, like upper class, middle class, middle class, I can divide into upper middle and lower middle. And lower class also divided into virtuous lower class and immoral lower class. So this class division was existing during that medieval English period in England. Class, this up, upper class, middle class, lower class, this was very much existing there. So the characters are pilgrims who were undertaking pilgrimage to the shrine of St. Thomas Becker in Canterbury. Now when they were on their pilgrimage to that Canterbury, you know, when night fell, they stayed at a hotel and the name of the hotel was Tabard Inn. So they gathered there and they knew to each other that yes, you know, he, he is also going to, let's say, the Canterbury Tale. Again, partner says, yes, I'm also going to, you know, uh, the Canterbury Tale. In that way, they became familiar. They, get, they got the platform to, you know, to know each other. And there, Geoffrey Saucer, he, you know, gave an activity to all the pilgrims just to make the pilgrims more interesting. And the activity was to tell two story each. While going to the Canterbury and two while coming to the, coming from the Canterbury. That means each pilgrim had to tell four stories. So that was the activity which was given by uh, the poet Geoffrey Saucer. But Saucer could write only 26 tales. She could not write all the tales. And out of these 29 characters, the knight was the most respectful person. Because during medieval period, knight was the most respectful because of chivalry. Okay, now let's proceed to, here see, I have, you know, given some of the pictures of upper class characters. So these are the pilgrims from upper class, the knight, the pardoner, the squire, the monk, the friar, and the samana. These are some of the uh, characters from upper class. So they belong to the upper class English society. And next, ecclesiastical character. This is very important. You may get short note on ecclesiastical characters from the Canterbury Tales. So ecclesiastical means the characters who you know were associated with the religious institution, the church, who were who were uh, associated with the church. They are called ecclesiastical characters. Nuns, person, pardoner, friar, they belong to the <coughs> ecclesiastical class. Again, middle class and lower class. Middle class, as I told you, divided into two, that is upper middle class and lower middle class. And again, lower class divided into two, virtuous lower class and immoral lower class and which character fall under which uh, section of, uh, of of their class of society it's mentioned in the slide so this is very important you should know also the class of every character now the, uh, let us proceed to the next one that is wife of but so this is specially given in the syllabus of the second semester so here i briefly going to uh, explain about the wife of but so what bard means here? Bard means there is a place during the medieval England. And this bard uh, was very popular for cloth making. This is commercial hub. 
commercial, you know, town which was very much popular for cloth making. And the wife of Bud was the representative of that uh, place. And she was also badly criticized by the poet. She was, you know, gap to, and she was also deaf at the same time. She could not hear. So, well, uh, wife of Bud was also expert in weaving and also in embroidery. Being a citizen of this place called Bud, she was also expert in weaving. And she loved traveling. She loved traveling. She traveled Italy, Spain, Jerusalem. That means she traveled across all the religious places of the world. She was a religious, but there is also some controversial nature of wife of birth. I'll tell you later what controversial about wife of birth. So she lived an honorable life, respectful life. The most controversial thing about wife of birth is though she is uh, religious, but she uh, you know, had many illicit relationships with many men. She married many times. And she also had relationship with many, uh, many males. And while, you know, uh, she got her turn to tell two stories, she loved telling romantic tales. And she basically loved, you know, gossiping. Which female love doing, so gossiping. So wife of Bart's prologue, the tale of wife of Bud is among the best known of sources category tales. So among these sources, 26 tales. This wife of Bud is one of the best. And this Canterbury tales gives us knowledge, gives us insight about the late middle English society. As I keep on talking about, you know, the middle English society, which basically reflected in this masterpiece of Geoffrey Saucer. She calls herself both as Elysian and Elise in the prologue. She means here, the wife of Bart. She, she married first at, at the age of 12 and had five husbands and also had relationship with many, uh, many males. So these are the characteristics of uh, wife of Bart. So thank you for joining in this uh, virtual class. So I shall explain in details in my next class. So thank you for joining.